Hi everyone, I'm Stephen Berlin. This is the third out of four talks that I'm going to give on transcendence and dreams. I'm sorry that I have to relate my transcendent dreams in their entirety. You know, transcendence cannot be taught in like step A, step B, and step C. Normally for degrees of transcendence, you either pop a hallucinogenic drug, or you go through years of spiritual discipline, or you get lucky. And so my plan is another alternative, and that is by uh, the fact that I've had uh, over my lifetime of dreaming, uh, a series of transcendent dreams, and it isn't that many, uh, that by your unconscious mind, and I have great respect for your unconscious mind, it will recognize by listening to these certain patterns and things that even I, you know, I don't recognize. You know, our minds are brilliant for doing that, and by listening to these, this variety of transcendent dreams, it'll, after your mind incorporates it and it stews, uh, a probably more appropriate word to be incubates, then uh, somewhere down the line, six days, six months, or six years, your dream will, your dreaming mind will perhaps deliver you, hopefully, your own transcendent uh, state of consciousness, which from your perspective will be far better than any of mine. So uh, custom made to your spiritual path. Okay, I'm going to get on to the uh, dream of today, which is a historical dream. I'm standing in a city square and I'm surrounded by this pretty impressive architecture and in front of the square there's like a stage and on both sides of the stage are two big metal bowls, I would say huge metal bowls and they got fire coming out of both of them and so uh, and night's beginning to fall very rapidly at this point and as I'm standing in this square uh, people start to really congregate and, and pretty soon they're just like thronging in and they're like pressing upon me and I'm, I'm you know, standing as like standing room only. And then it was dark and you have these two flaming bowls and this mob of people, really, really uh, a lot of generated energy there. And, uh, and I thought, man, I better stick around. Something's, something's going to happen, you know. So anyway, out between, out of the darkness from between those two bowls steps Hitler. And he starts addressing the crowd. Now this a uh, crowd of uh, people now suddenly are spellbound and I'm, I'm witnessing this and you know and it's, it was like uh, I was gonna say Woodstock now how do you like that Woodstock in Nazi Germany where's that connection well wh where the connection is is I was invited to Woodstock and I didn't go and that was my big regret of that drug-induced decade I didn't go to Woodstock so anyway, uh, but here I was in a historical event, and I was actually there. Now, you know, these are these kinds of things like Woodstock and and this Germany thing are things that you hear about happening, but often we're not there when they happen. Well, here I was there, and I was amazed by this, and but I wasn't lucid. Then I all of a sudden just lifted off the ground vertically, and now my feet are dangling above the the heads of this crowd listening to, you know, the Fuhrer, and uh, I thought, this is a dream? I'm dreaming this? I, I've been transported back through time? you got to be kidding me! And, and I'm just flabbergasted. And then right at that point, obviously, this is like a major lucidity now, realizing this, and right at that point, some unseen force began pulling me. I was still in the standing orientation. Some unseen force began to pull me back. Now, in retrospect, that's a good thing because I'm sure some of uh, Hitler's uh, henchmen would have, you know, shot me out of the sky. But anyway, I'm being pulled back now through, you know, in the standing orientation. And I tried to turn around and fly, but I, I couldn't do it for some reason. But I did look over my shoulder, and then I looked back, and I was amazed, as I always am, that as I looked over my shoulder, the the background was coming toward me and then I turned back around to the front and the scenery is again receding and I was just as always just stunned at the unconscious mind's ability to create such a complex visual experience in a dream so perfectly but it did anyway uh, I'm now now it gets lighter because I can now see the countryside below me uh, the Hitler spectacle is receded and, uh, and I assume this was uh, presumably France. And as I uh, went over the countryside of France, after a while, then I saw a shoreline, you know, the waves and the coast. 
And I then continued to move back, and I was now, presumably, over the Atlantic Ocean. Now, then as I moved out over the ocean, I lost anything I could visually grasp onto. And uh, this is where you would think I would wake up, but I didn't. Now, this part is where the dream became transcendent. The rest, you know, was all sequential, and I could tell it. This I can't really tell. Next day, I was writing down all day long. And when, you know, anytime I could think of something, I was jotting it down. This, all of a sudden, when I was out over the ocean and I lost all visual stimuli, all of a sudden, it rose up in me. It flooded down on top of me, like a tsunami on the right and a tsunami on the left. And, and I was twisted and pulled and yanked and jerked and turned and pushed and shoved and warped and morphed. And I was, I was, I was like an amoeba. In a, uh, in a boiling soup of uh, imagery and emotion. And, and uh, I saw, I saw uh, war and love and battles and blood and uh, all, of the, all of the major archetypes, I would say, and family and isolation, nations and flags and religious and sacred symbols and, uh, and throughout it all, you know, birth and disease, all, all manner of disease and death, death over and over, and violence and, and youthful infatuation and, uh, and then all of the common things that are common across cultures and time, implements and tools and timepieces and furniture and uh, transportation and uh, art and uh, music and uh, books, uh, weather, transportation, you name it. And it was the, the I would go in a, I could keep going on. You, you can see what I mean. And I was just, I woke up then and my, my heart was just going boom, 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 boom. And the blood was just thrilling through my veins. And I, uh, out of breath, and I estimate this dream lasted at least an hour. People say dreams don't last that long, but in my opinion, this lasted more than an hour, maybe an hour and a half. And I was just weak and exhausted by this. And, and yet I felt that I had witnessed the magnificent epic of man, the divine and mystical drama, the myth of myths. And, and how it changed me is, very frankly put, I felt that I had lived it all, that I had died all of the deaths, that I had been the... The, the victim of every horror in the world and also the perpetrator of every horror in the world and also all of the love and all of the compassion and all of the family and all of the uh, good and wonderful things in life as well and all, all of the beautiful I've, I've been all the beautiful artists you know, and I've, I've written all of the world's most wonderful music and and poetry and all this but all of the all the bad stuff too, the, 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 you know, the, the, everything. So, and by extension, and I'm not telling you to believe this, you too, you have too. And how it's changed me is when I see a homeless person, for instance, I think, well, there, there, there's me, there, there's me in another body. And when I hear on TV about some uh, guy um, or woman, whatever, committing some despicable crime and they're going to be sentenced to death, I think that's me in another body. Glad I'm not conscious in that one at the moment. And, and I just really strongly feel this. So uh, we have been the victims and the perpetrators. And with the world the way it is right now, we need to really have compassion for the world because we are in this mess together. And we are, we are everything we hate, everything we speak up against. And, and if, we under, if we could just understand that. Anyway, I'm, I'm sure I'm running out of time. So... Uh, I want to uh, end this. I also want to thank you, uh, since I'm in this uh, divine and mystical drama, this, this uh, chaotic epic of man, I'm, I'm glad you're in it with me.